This week on BSD Now, Alan's actually at a conference or probably in the air flying to it right now. So we've got a short episode for you. We sat down with uh, John Hickson to discuss free NAS development and their future plans. And of course, the show is going to be back next week with a normal episode. So stay tuned to BSD Now, the place to be SD. It's going to get nasty. Recorded April 23rd, 2014. Hey, I'm your host, Chris Moore. And I'm Alan Jude. And we're glad to have you guys with us this week. So, in full disclosure, yes. this episode is being recorded a bit early. Yes. Alan's actually out of town right yes. now. So, if you're watching this next week, which is in the future for us. Yes, or now for you. Which, yeah, now for you. Which conference are you I'm going Alan? to uh, Linux Fest Northwest uh, up near Fest Seattle uh, in okay. Bellingham there. Uh, giving a talk or anything? Uh, no, I'm just uh, attending. Um, it's uh, where right. the studio for Jupiter Broadcasting is, so I'm actually uh, recording uh, some episodes of TechSnap in the studio there and hanging out with a bunch of people and going up to the conference there and uh, help represent BSD at a Linux conference, maybe troll some people, etc. cetera. Okay. Oh, very cool. So because of that happening, yes. and we're recording this uh, early, we're not going to be doing our usual news and everything else, yeah. but we do have a uh, interview we're going to play in a little bit. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we'll go ahead and, yeah, and do that. No, but no first, show this week because when the show is supposed to be happening, I will be on an airplane. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a little hard to yeah. do. I mean, the, they have Wi-Fi. Well, not on, on, planes, not on all the planes. Not quite and, that good yet. And, yeah, it, they, they generally have a policy of, like, you get, like, 75 megabytes of usage, and then they cap you to so slow it won't uh, work. So we yeah. would we'd have enough to do, like, the introduction of a show or something, and then it would be like, <laughs> nope, it's over. No, that's, that's okay. This way is better. Yes. But uh, before we get into the interview, we do want to, of course, mention the sponsor for BSD yes. Now this week, of course, is uh, IX Systems, as usual. Yep. And, of course, you can go to ixsystems.com slash BSD Now, fill out the form, go ahead and download that free guide they have on how to build a, you know, how to purchase a server for open source, what you need to look for in a vendor yep. that's uh, building a box for you. Some good information in there. If you're going to be yep. purchasing hardware anytime in the near future, you'll definitely want to take it's, a look at it's that. It's the great stuff you need to convince your boss why you shouldn't mm -hmm. buy that at Dell, you should get something better. Yes, yes, for sure. Something that's been battle tested and burned in, and you know will just just arrive yes, and work. And every, and that's been custom built yes, it, it's, to your specs. It'll all work perfectly on BSD. You'll get mm -hmm. proper support for it, not just from random support people, but from people that actually work on FreeBSD for a living. Sure. So yeah. So of course, again, that URL is uh, ixsystems.com slash BSD now. And uh, go check out their page. There are lots of cool stuff yep, going on. Of have... course, they're the sponsors of FreeNAS and PCBSD. Yep. Uh, they're now doing FreeBSDNews.net. Yep. And they're usually at almost every Linux conference. Uh, oh, yeah. So anytime you go to the conference, you see those blinking horns on people. You know the IX guys are there. Like that's, If you want to get a pair of these, you have to go uh, to your local Linux conference and find the BSD people. And then mm -hmm. maybe if you're early, you can get a pair yeah, of horns. Yeah, you horns. can come early. They're gone usually right oh, yes. away. It's, that's one of the most popular things at these conferences. Yeah. So anyway, of course, IX System does all that big in the BSD community, yeah. and we're proud to have them as sponsors here. Yeah. So and again, they, we they encourage have you. The full range of servers, uh, you know, whether you need a small little short depth Intel Atom uh, up through something like a FreeNAS Mini, you want to just load it with disks and have high-speed encryption, or if you need you know, a regular one or two U server, or if you need something huge with like 36 four terabyte hard drives in it, or, uh, you know, 80 cores and a terabyte of RAM, or something ridiculous and custom, like how can we fit as many 10 gigabit Ethernet ports in a single 2U chassis as possible? Mm -hmm. It's like, I didn't think it was possible to fit 24 NICs in four computers, let alone fit oh, four computers in two U's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, whatever challenge you have, uh, go and explain it to the people over at IX and they will come up with a solution. For sure. You know, I think that that was always one of the most important ways when you're asking for help is not mm -hmm. explaining what you want, 
but explaining what it is you're trying to do and, and what your goal is and what you need. And then maybe then it's easier to come up with a, the best solution. You know? sure. And that's that's the kind of thing working with IX. When you call and talk to the sales guy, he knows what, what you're going to do on your BSD box right. and what that will in turn mean you need as far as hardware goes, as opposed to somebody saying, well, these are just the models we carry, and I don't know if that'll work in your case. Yeah. Like, will that scale up to this many users and how many? Yeah. Yeah, or like yeah. you know, the None sales that. guy that is like, yes, I know what ZFS is. But I, mm. I don't know how much RAM you need. No, sorry. Yeah. Um, no, I can't suggest like, the optimal Or you need or more RAM. And, Always more yeah. RAM. <laughs> sure, sure. Just Which isn't more necessarily money, but untrue, no. but yeah. Sure. You know, like but it yeah, is even IX just... guys will make sure it's done right. Yes. Uh, you know, even if it comes down to recommending which type of SSD do I want for my Zill versus for my L2 Arc. You know, and they have all the right Intel stuff to make it happen. Yeah. Well, cool. So again, that URL, ixsystems.com slash BSD now. So feel free to check it out and get in touch with them and uh, let them know we sent you from BSD now. So we'll be back in just a moment with our interview for the week with John Hickson of, of course, IX Systems, who will be talking about free NAS development. So exciting to talk here coming up. Hope you stick around. So we're joined today by John Hickson from IX Systems. Glad to have you with us, John. Hello. Nice to hey. So, first question, we ask everybody this, which hopefully you've seen some of the episodes, so you know what's coming. I've watched all of them. Oh, okay, awesome, long time fan. <laughs> so anyway, how'd you get your start in BSD? In BSD, you know, so early on, you know, I was in the programming and I, you know, I don't even honestly remember how I came across it, but you know, I, I came onto Linux like a lot of people and I hadn't used it for very long before some of the people I was that I talked to on a daily basis in IRC were like, you should use BSD, you know, and basically they all said, you know, it's more stable, it's real Unix, mm -hmm. you know, and so I, I didn't hesitate, I, I grabbed it, you know, this was like two point something, I don't remember, oh, like wow. two, two, one, five or so. I, I honestly don't remember the number, you know, but I, I grabbed it, I installed it, um, and at, I just knew right away, you know, I just, I, I really liked it. And for the, some of the dumbest reasons, just the way the console looked, you know, it, was, <laughs> it wasn't as bright and shiny as like Linux was, it was the mm -hmm. cons 25, you know. And so, you know, I, I immediately liked it. I liked how easy it was to set up and configure and install. I know that's what you pro probably aren't used to hearing, but it was, it was easier to install and configure for me. And then right away going into the ports tree and everything being there, you know that I wanted it just it just felt natural and mm -hmm. so I I stuck with I've used it ever since that's all <laughs> there there may have been a brief moment in time where I wasn't quite with BSD around five but I mean it was temporary oh, so. yeah five is a good time to miss <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so how did you get started uh, working on FreeNAS so with FreeNAS, um, so, you know, I, I, I'm with IX, obviously, and when the time came where we decided that we were going to take over the project, I wasn't actually involved with it at the very, very start. I was still working on the FreeBSD mall. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, I'd say a few months into that, you know, we determined, you know, we're probably not going to do anything with the FreeBSD mall anymore that we need you to be put on. So I, I was pulled into the project, and right away, you know, it just hit the ground running, you know, it's like we need uh, we need an installer, we need a shell, you, you know, interface, et cetera, you know, every area, just a whole bunch of projects were thrown at me, and so I did it, and pretty much since then, that's been my full-time daily job. So living and breathing free nights? Yes, yes, and I do, you know, I, I, I take pride in it, I, I work on it every day, I, I love it, you know, through good times and bad times. <laughs> well, you mentioned a couple features there. So, what what are some of the features you're most responsible for so, in the current version? So these days, you know, I'm primarily responsible for. I, I work on the jail system, and a lot of that, I've snatched a lot of code from this Chris Moore guy. Um, I am <laughs> I'm responsible for the plugin system, and that makes use of the jails system. Mm -hmm. And then the, the biggie that 
I'm always working on and always helping people debug is directory services, Active Directory, LDAP, NIS, you know, all of that. The integration, for, for the most part, Active Directory and LDAP integrating into a Windows environment. And so I'm, I do a lot of work with that. And yeah, that's probably what I do more than anything is making sure that FreeNAS works well with Windows. Hmm. <laughs> well, I was going to say, so FreeNAS is working well with Windows, and aside from Active Directory, LDAP, what else do you do as far as Windows integration goes? I saw something about shadow copies. And so, yeah, so, I mean, Active Directory is a big part of it because a lot of people that use FreeNAS, especially in the corporate environment, you know, they have a Windows environment and they have Active Directory, and, and Samba is our, what we use for SIFs, and so making it work with Windows is more than Active Directory. So shadow copies, you know, shadow copies... If you aren't aware, um, it's kind of like your life preserver where mm -hmm. you, you have a box and you can look at ev all of your files and directories and you can look and go back into time and, you know, however however far you have your, your ZFS snapshot, it's configured to be and you can go recover an uh, old previous version of a file or directory. And the way shadow copies work is ZFS snapshots and then we expose those through Samba to Windows to be previous versions of files. Hmm. Um, so it actually gives you the Windows graphical interface to play with your ZFS snapshots? So like when you right click on a file. When you right click on a file, you can, you can go to previous versions and you'll get you'll get a list of your previous versions and those are all ZFS snap snapshots. And nice. Samba exposes those as previous versions. So hmm. that's shadow copies. That's really cool. That is really cool. Yeah. Um, and making it work with Windows, you know, like we, we just switched to Samba 4, and so we've been hitting all kinds of issues with Samba 4, and so we're, we've been actively working on that. There's, you know, like there, there was a high CPU utilization bug, um, a lot of Samba panics for different reasons, um, copying large numbers of files where the file handles aren't being closed. We're not, it, I'm not even sure what's happening yet with that one, but it appears that file handles aren't being closed, and so mm. we run out of file oh, descriptors. Yeah. yeah, and just any, pretty much everything that comes along with Sama is making FreeNAS work with Windows. <laughs> so, and, and that's what a lot of people use FreeNAS for, is as a file server for Windows, so mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a lot of stuff to be done. Yeah, so do you have any idea of, of like what portion, what proportion of people use FreeNAS for different things? Like how many people are using it to back virtual machines versus using it in a Windows N environment number, at home? Numbers wise, I honestly don't know. I mean, I know, like I, I've i said in my talks, you know, we, we've had over 6 million downloads um, and a lot of people use it as a file server for Windows and a lot of people use, use it for, you know, they, they'll use iSCSI for doing VM storing VMs on FreeNAS. What, what the number is, I honestly don't know. Um, but plenty plenty of people do it, and we know that because we get a lot of feedback or you know, a lot of people have been bugs, and so that kind of gives us an idea of what people are using it for. So, And then also a lot of people are using it as a multimedia server as well, but that's more in the, the home, home, home user, yeah. Sure. So for home users, what kind of multimedia plugins do you guys have? Obviously, so the biggest one is Plex. Mm -hmm. Plex Media Server is like the, the bread and butter. You know, it's, that's sure. what everybody loves and everybody uses. That's the biggest, most popular plugin to date that we have. And so a lot of home users will install Plex. And there, there's a couple of other ones too, like, you know, there's Firefly and Mini DLNA for doing iTunes and mm -hmm. uh, streaming and all of that. And th those are pretty popular. And a lot of people are using these all together in ways to where you know they they basically just set up a computer plug plug it in their TV and then use something like Plex to play to either the TV directly or or to stream it to like a, a, a Roku whatever those a are Roku called or a Roku or Roku yeah or an, or their tablets um, that's I mean if you go look in on the forums you, you go into IRC you know a lot a lot of people do that and a lot of people do that that don't even need an as or care that it's an as. They just do it because it's available and it's easy to configure and set up. Yeah, you get the web interface to set up the file storage and it just works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Oh, that's definitely a cool to do it. Yeah, I've used Plex on my mobile devices, and you can stream to Chromecast and all yeah, that, and it just that, it's pretty neat. Just does its thing. And I'm glad that we have that in FreeBSD now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, definitely. So, future FreeNAS. I know you guys are on version nine point two dot something something. Nine point two dot one point two. Dot one dot two. Okay. So, what's coming up next? When are you guys gonna make the jump to ten? So, we're gonna do a nine two one three, and that's basically just gonna be, you know, bug fixes. You know, a stable release, mm -hmm. just so that there's some of the bugs that came out with one two are fixed and addressed, and so that there's something more stable out there for people to use. Um, mm -hmm. The next big release will be 922, and that's that's going to have new features. That's going to have binary updates. I think we're overhauling the the build system as well. We're, we're doing a number of things, so that's and that's down the road a little ways. You know, maybe I don't I don't even know what the timeline is on that right now, but it's it's in the next couple months, um, if not sooner. The jump to 10, um, that's going to be obviously a very big ordeal, and that's that's probably coming towards the end of the year. Um, Maybe even later. We we're not so eager to jump into 10.0, but 10.1 is kind of what we're aiming for. And so I I I'd probably say at this point it's probably a year away. It's hard to say, but I mean we have a whole bunch of new things coming in into that. You know we're we're gonna do an overhaul of the UI. Um, just we're gonna make it pretty and shiny and easier to use. Nice, <laughs> nice. Cool. Oh, so, something so to look forward to for you FreeNAS users. Yeah, speaking of pretty and shiny, the new FreeNAS Mini just came out. Did That's pretty and, and shiny. And, like picking out how that was going to work. I had no nothing to do with it, but okay. I want one. Oh, right. <laughs> I think everybody wants one. <laughs> yeah, I I think it's great. You know, we 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 have more RAM, and now we got you yeah, know ECC. ECC RAM. You know, everybody's made a big deal about that. It's got IPMI. It's got you know the dual NICs. It's, it's well, the IPMI is a big thing. It's yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, even yeah. at home, it's, it's right. Just, you know, my, my FreeNAS box is in my basement. Yeah, and I, I, I have. This a, means not having to go into the basement. I, I have a, a, you know, our old mini, and it's like, you know, I've I've borked it several times, and you know, I got to go find a keyboard and a monitor and uh, yeah. plug it in. When <laughs> yeah, the best thing about IPMI is not having to have an optical drive. Mm -hmm. So no, it's yeah. it's it's a pretty nice unit. Mm -hmm. uh, cool. Well, Anything else you'd want to mention about FreeNAS or interesting projects going on there that uh, you know, spill the beans about? No. No. Okay. <laughs> Do you know much about uh, the release engineering process as far as pulling in changes? Such as? Uh, well, there's a bunch of new stuff coming in for ZFS that's so only, we're only going to be in 10. Or it's we're in completely now, in sync with OpenZFS. We're, we're fully right. in sync with it. Um, we do pull in stuff if we feel it's necessary. So like our, our ZFS ninja is, is Shin mm -hmm. Lee, and he, you know, anything that's important, he'll pull it in. We have no problem pulling in features out of 10 and bring them in a nine for anything, right. you know? Mm -hmm. So if, if we think it's necessary, we'll do it, you know? Even well, yeah, like there's a bunch of performance improvements, and by the sounds of it, they'll go into 10 stable, but not nine stable, and uh, but you pull them in anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. We that's do cool. it all the time. Yep. So that's very slick. So where can users get involved? Do you guys have a development branch where they can come and build it or help out or So yeah, so the source code is on GitHub. Um, it takes a little bit to get up and going. You you'll need to build it on FreeBSD or PCBSD nine two. Mm -hmm. And getting involved, you know, grab you know, grab the source code. You know, build it. If 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 you know how to program, you know, dig around in it, take a look, get a get a feel for it, use it. You know, I just I just gave a talk on this yesterday. There's all kinds of ways you can get involved. You don't have to be technical. You don't have to be a programmer. You can contribute documentation. You can file bugs. You can submit use cases. There's so a lot of different ways you can get involved. But having people submit patches that would be awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and, so and anything anything that can be improved, you know, we we want to see, we want it to happen, and whether it's a, a feature or a bug, you know, let us know. Cool. Oh, very cool. Well, this has been awesome. Thanks, John. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for having me. having me. Excellent. We'll be back in just a moment. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed that interview with John Hickson. I hope you enjoyed uh, doing that while we were out. Tokyo. Yes, HBSD Con was amazing. Yeah. 
was amazing. Yes. So, of course, a uh, little plug for next year. Yes, for sure. You make it start making travel plans yes, now. I, I've already decided I'm going next year, and nothing can change oh, that. So. I'm sure it makes the tickets easier to uh, yes. book, too, and cheaper. Much cheaper. <laughs> I think uh, even just booking in, like, October last year uh, for, for this year uh, saved me, like, $200 or more off last year's oh, price. So Nice. Nice. If only it would make the flight shorter. Yeah, there's, would, there's no way to yeah. make this flight shorter than 13 hours from here. <laughs> Why don't they fly the Concorde anymore? I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. All right. Well, of course, uh, we want to mention all the tutorials and we post in their entirety at bsdnow.tv. Yep. So uh, many tutorials we've done. Take those a look. are living tutorials, so they get updated from time mm-hmm. to time. Uh, actually, I think they the, the one on uh, doing raid on uh, OpenBSD just got a bunch of updates with some of the new features and uh, the newer version of OpenBSD and just improvements that people have sent in and stuff. So uh, mm-hmm. those tutorials cool. aren't just static from when we show them on the show. Uh, the actual instructions get improved and we fix problems and add stuff and well, they get updated as the underlying software gets updated yeah, too exactly so of course you can send uh, questions feedbacks comments show ideas or topics or a story you found that you'd like us to mention on the show to feedback at bsdnow.tv yeah. please send it there that's the only place we monitor so if you send it elsewhere I may not yeah, get we'll, it or we won't see Alan it. may not get it or TJ won't get it and yeah. it won't get it won't get in the so. show doc and then it won't happen yeah yeah, yeah please send it there so if you've got something cool to talk about and you want to come on for an interview interview as well, shoot us an email there yep. so we can get you scheduled and we'll line that up or find out if you're going to be at a conference we're going to be at yes. and we can try and interview you in person, which is, I think that's more fun it in is, a way because yep. there's more time to to mess around and, yep. and get it just right. But uh, also, if you have tutorial requests, go ahead and send them in so we can get tutorials written on things that interest you, stuff that you want to know about how to do or you exactly. think the community might be yeah. interested if you in. Have, if you have a tutorial written, uh, that'd be great. We can add it That's to the show. That's even better, right? Uh, and, uh, Attach the document. Yeah, if you have uh, something you just want to know how to do, let us know and uh, we'll try to make it happen. And uh, mm-hmm. you can watch us live Wednesdays at 2 p.m. except for... Yep. the week that you already realized wasn't happening live <laughs> but yep. uh yes most weeks it's 2 p.m eastern which is 1800 utc cool all right well we we'll look forward to being back next week with a uh, full episode and i uh, hope you guys have a good week